Be me, Halfling Bard. Be not me, Human Monk and Tiefling Fighter. Be also not me, a human alchemist that everyone hates. He killed the Bard's siblings, tortured the fighter's girlfriend and tried to make the monk a slave. <laughs> what the f***? Hey, what's up, buddy? Sundried Raiskins here with a collection of natural seafood snacks, <laughs> as well as uh, DMD memes as usual. <laughs> How are you guys doing? Having a wonderful day today. Before jumping into the video, I just want to quickly kindly ask you if you're not yet subscribed to the channel to consider doing so now. It only takes a moment, I appreciate it a lot, and you can undo it later if you change your mind. And uh, yeah, with that being said, I hope you enjoyed the video. I swear I'm gonna freaking stab you. <laughs> Alright, starting off on a very good note here, I guess. Be me. Not actually involved with this campaign. But my friend was a DM and I would often listen in on their sessions as they were really fun. Be not me. Tiefling Sorcerer, Dwarf Fighter, half orc Paladin, Changeling Rogue and the Human Ranger. All are pretty standard backstories, cast outs, orphans, noble background, blah blah blah, you know, trying to make a name for themselves, etc, etc. Names are all pretty standard. Delilah Blazeheart, Lore Rockbreaker, George, Ashman and Draven Shore, respectively. They are playing through Curse of Strahd as their veteran players. Awesome to see how well they all play off of each other, both character and combat wise. 7 sessions in and the players are all camping out around the fire and decide to have a little heart to heart. Each player takes a turn around the circle, going more in depth into their origins and what they did before they met each other. Get to Amjan. He was a former member of the Royal Guard. As a changeling, he naturally excelled in deception and espionage and was picked from the corpse to serve in special operations, like destroying important documents of rival kingdoms and going beyond enemy lines to kill military figureheads. Suddenly, the face of one of the players at the table goes white and his eyes widen. Amjun? Out of character, the changeling player makes a devilish smile, like an IRL version of this face. Actually, my name is pronounced Aomhun, not Amjun. And I was always just too shy to correct you guys. W well, we never did ask what your full name was. Oh, my sincerest apologies. My last name is Kus. Suddenly, a light bulb flicked on with everyone else at the table. A changeling whose name is pronounced Aomhun Kus and specializes in deceiving people and sabotage, aka being an imposter. My face when... <laughs> My face when this freaking guy has been making a long con Among Us joke for half a goddamn year and we only just now noticed. <laughs> that is incredible. That is so good. So well thought out in advance. Oh god damn it. I would, I would be mad about that though. I would just hate to have that. <laughs> Night Vision sold separately. Be me, DM. Be the PCs, a half-elf cleric, gnome rogue, warforged druid, and a half-orc fighter. Through some shenaniganry, the party gets trapped in a cave-in while investigating a mine. Cue a chorus of I have dark vision and me groaning. <laughs> you are in a relatively open area with one remaining path leading deeper in. Cleric, who's the unofficial leader of the party, warns them to stay quiet in case of enemies and motions them to go deeper. They walk for a while and come across a second big open room with several cobbles. Roll initiative. The druid doesn't roll. The party asks why, but they get no answer. The party notices something that I had noticed earlier. The druid's mini isn't on the map anymore. The druid finally <laughs> says something out of character. <laughs> Guys, Warforged don't have dark vision. <laughs> The party realizes they never said out loud where they were going. They left the druid in the starting area. <laughs> uh oh, that PNG. Down on action economy, plus the druid has all the crowd control spells, plus nobody has any light spells. They all retreat to get him, but meanwhile some cobbles manage to catch up and there are some struggles. Only make it halfway when the druid comes charging in, yelling, glowing red hot with healing spirits sitting on his shoulder. He says he heard fighting and he says that hit metal is the only spell that he has that can make light and he was already out of wild shapes. This SOB spent his only 4th level spell slot and his best healing spell making sure he doesn't kill himself getting to the fight. <laughs> So hilarious, I don't even feel like correcting him that he can't cast two concentration spells at once. The fight turns in the player's favor and the adventure is continued without much trouble. But 
The party takes turns guiding the druid by hand to make sure that they don't lose him again and they have to explain the battlefield to him on every turn or else he attacks randomly. Overall, a pretty fun and relatively harmless twist on a dungeon that I otherwise had no big plans for. <laughs> Oh, that is so good. It's it is it's literally what they say that the best things come when you don't expect them. <laughs> like unprepared for. Now that's thinking with portals. Bimi, forever DM of a long term campaign. It's a modern day setting, but with magic and other stuff. It's actually the new world of darkness White Wolf system. Binatmi. Powerful transmutation and spatial magician and the rest of the party who are very much enablers. Our party gets reliable information that the big bad evil guy, or at least their henchmen, were hiding out in an enemy military base on the other side of the world. One of the party had just gotten a new magical spell that they wanted to test out, portals. Roughly two and a half hours of discussion about all the specifics and methodology and the plan was set. A little over a week later, a portal opens just above the enemy military base, releasing a 2 meter ball of solid osmium that had just spent that week falling quote unquote, through the same two portals over and over again in a solid vacuum. Math ensued, but suffice it to say that this was one of the largest explosions in the entire history of the campaign. <laughs> I'm sorry, one of? I'm sorry this was not the largest one? <laughs> Okay then. Also, the military base didn't stand a chance. Almost started World War 3 though, but there was no proof that it wasn't just a random asteroid. <laughs> your greatest enemy is always yourself. Bimi, the DM. Pinatmi, a barbarian, a wizard, a rogue and a cleric. The party is investigating a mysterious situation where people are disappearing for some time and they are replaced by imposters. Is <laughs> Is this gonna be another Among Us joke? <laughs> the replacements are perfect copies of who they replaced until they are quote unquote activated and follow all orders from a mysterious evil creator. The replacements are also unaware that they are imposters until activated, so normal tactics involving enhancements and truth detection spells won't work. The party has found a dungeon where they believe that the imposters are being made and come from and they are investigating it. A trap is sprung and the party is separated into separate hallways. Following the hallways, they come to a large open room where they see the other party members, as well as another version of themselves and their party members. Roll for initiative. Barbarian, roll stop. He realizes that there is only one entity that he is absolutely certain is not a replacement. Barbarian. I rage and charge across the room attacking my copy. Me. Okay, roll to hit. Does an 18 hit? I don't know. What's your AC? What? He's an exact copy of you. He has the same stats and equipment. So if it breaks your AC, it hits. Oh, okay. Then uh, yeah, it hits. He takes uh, 23 damage. Okay, nice. Scribbles something down, rolls some dice, and then looks back up. Okay, Barbarian. Your copy just suddenly screamed in rage and ran across the room attacking you for 23 damage. It's your turn now. What do you do? The party goes dead silent. Um, what? You just got attacked for 23 damage and it's your turn. How? I charged at him, he can't charge at me because he's in front of me. No, he just charged at you and now it's your turn. That face when the party suddenly realizes what's happening. The rest of the combat is a glorious cluster f <gasps> as the individual players try to figure out whether they were controlling their original character or their replacement for the fight as well as which one of them they should be helping. The combat ends and they still don't know which ones of them are the originals and which ones could suddenly have their wills overwritten by the big bad evil guy. The rest of the campaign is spent with them trying to figure out how to stop the replacement, keep their wills from being overwritten and keep the replacement from dying when the big bad evil guy is killed. They knew that they mostly succeeded, but not wholly. They never did find out which of them killed their original characters. I am an evil DM. <laughs> Jesus Christ, that's not, I mean, I guess it is kind of evil, maybe, I don't know, but that is, that is amazing actually. That is, it's a really, really cool and unique idea that you don't really see very often. I mean, it, it's, you know, the kind of unique that you don't see often. It is really good <laughs> if you want to try to pull this off as a DM. The DM made a boss battle to make the party feel overpowered. Be me, Halfling Bard. Be not me. Human Monk and Tiefling Fighter. Be also not me. 
a human alchemist that everyone hates. He killed the bard's siblings, tortured the fighter's girlfriend, and tried to make the monk a slave. <laughs> what the f and they're, they're still playing together for some reason? Okay. <laughs> we had some skirmishes with him before, but we're only just clones. Sorry, is this? Okay, I just had to double check. It's not the same person that posted, so it has nothing to do with the previous story. But it also just mentions clones. <laughs> Okay. The party just cleared a hard dungeon that got us to average level 8, and the last time that we fought him we were level 5. The alchemist becomes a spider centaur thingy, and I have a magic item that said that he had 600 plus health. In the dungeon, the party had got some homebrew items, a 3d10 gauntlet for the monk, and a 2d20 sword for the fighter. On my turn, I become a giant ape using polymorph. The boss died in 4 turns. <laughs> I mean, okay, yeah, but Jesus Christ, those homebrew items that they got. <laughs> 3d10 gauntlet for the monk and 2d20 sword for, for the fighter, what? <laughs> a dwarven drinking song. Be me, playing a dwarf while the main character isn't with the rest of the party. Be not me, two drows, a human and a fairy. Accompany them to Undermount as one drow is a drinking body. Go to a bar owned by a dwarf in Schoolport. Buy a whole cake for myself and the party with the loot that we found. Try to get the whole bar to join in a dwarven drinking song. In character, start singing. Absolutely no one in the bar joins in. <laughs> the party members facepalm in embarrassment. I keep going and the DM is loving it, busting up laughing. I get a point of inspiration. <laughs> My face when Diggy Diggy Hole is now canonically the song sung as the ritual of the march. Mission accomplished. Be a stowaway on a ship. The ship arrives at the destination. I decide to disguise myself as a sailor. The DM misheard that I wanted to cross-dress. I just go with it. I get stopped by a half-orc and he is seduced by me, but still wants to know what I'm doing here. Keep dodging his questions, but he keeps insisting. Stealthily cast Minor Illusion. A 5-foot screaming head appears out of nowhere. <laughs> While everyone is distracted, I flee the ship. Random party beaker. Be me, dragonborn druid. Be the PCs, a human bard and a rogue half-elf. Be not me, new DM, a good friend of mine, and started jokingly penalizing players saying dumb sh <gasps> with temporary stacking intelligence score drops. The rogue keeps doing dumb sh <gasps> and making bad puns to spite the DM and his int starts dropping into the low single digit. <laughs> I'm casually scrolling through my druid spell list when I notice an interesting one. Yo guys, did you know that speak with plants was a thing? Bard. Yeah, you might want to prepare that in case we would require the rogue's insight anytime soon. <laughs> uh, cute laughing trap. <laughs> I know it's probably overkill and probably too much, but I really like this idea. <laughs> Alright, that's gonna be it for today's video, so thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to leave a like if you did and subscribe for more if you haven't already. Also, thank you to our supporting channel on Patreon as well as on YouTube as channel members. Thank you so much, I appreciate it a lot. Links for if you wanna check those out as well as links to the social media, Discord, and we're sorry with anything else. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time. Have a great day, bye!